to as Charles is doing the thing. All right. Um, welcome to, this is our first marquee match of week four. Um, the people have spoken. We have Caleb Dig Dogger 48 versus Charles Straight Shade in a, a rivalry that has spanned multiple seasons um, and is a little bit one-sided. <laughs> It's just just a little bit one sided, um, but we got two stacked looking teams here. It's a lot of different options. Um, I know from Charles' side, we've had a couple different sweeping teams over the first couple weeks. But uh, I know prepping with him, there was a lot of things we were worried about, mostly dealing around Sableye issues. You know, having mm-hmm. to be a natural dark type, you can't prankster T wave it from Volbeat or you know, do different things like that, and it's one of those issues where, like, you can also run Snatch and just steal your Tailwind if you try to prank your Tailwind, so trying to set up leads, I know, was a little bit of an issue for him. Um, but there's just a couple things that are interesting. Walking Wake being huge as a threat, and I think slightly outspeeding Enamorous was another one. Mm-hmm. Uh, it outspeeds, it can have a 177 base speed, and an average can only have 173, so that's another thing where you'd like to have a clean answer, but you're just not outspeeding. So it's like, do you run a tailwind set and try to outspeed that way? It's interesting. Mm-hmm. Volbeat, I think, is going to be really useful here, um, specifically to deal with, I mean, it looks, you know, um, for the your speed, uh, if he's running speed on um Wake, yeah, the Thunder Wave can help negate that. Um, if he's running, which he's run Rain Dance Floatzel in the past, that can also be really helpful. Um, the Thunder Wave on Volbeat. You brought up Sableye, uh, you know, prepping with Caleb a little bit. His Sableye is, you know, for multiple seasons has been the sort of crown jewel of his teams. He really loves using this, uh, the Prankster strats. He's kind of a tricky player, just in sort of the, the um, sets he comes up with. And I think that that's a cool contrast to Charles, who I feel like a lot of times really goes for very straightforward, you know, sort of like, if I can just, you know, helping hand eruption and Oko this thing, what's he going to do about it, you know? Whereas Caleb likes to come up with really intricate sets that sometimes work out and sometimes don't. So I, I like this sort of rivalry that these two have with each other, just because I think that um, they have really contrasting play styles. And um, I think the teams are going to match up really well. Yeah, and uh, it's just like you said, for like a helping hand eruption, we just did a quick check. I don't believe Caleb has any access to wide guard. So that is something that like could come out. Except if you eruption and he you know, he switches into walking wake, it four times resists. So there's just like this that match up real well. It I'm pretty sure it depends on just what lead you see. It's probably just gonna determine most of the game plan. And mm-hmm. everything we were looking at for Charles basically just revolved around Sableye and one other Pokemon is going to be the lead. And just what move does Sableye click kind of determines a lot of it also. Yeah. Game one, ton of information gathering, I'm sure, from both sides. Is um, that the wrong Urshifu, they say? Hmm. said, oh. <laughs> and we check the sheet. Uh, a rapid strike, and that is... Uh, it's definitely the... <laughs> Oh my goodness. It Does probably... it always show that way in preview? Okay. If it shows right for him, I'm sure he knows. So it's all I was good. To say, I'm sure he tried to put um, surging strikes on it too. And if, <laughs> yeah. if the other Urshifu. I know he validated, so I know it works. It's probably just the wrong image there. All right. But. So here we go with a Volbeat and an Entei lead versus a Sableye. Um, and floats a lead. So, immediately looking at things, um, Charles looks a little bit down just because floats you know, into Entei, you know, basic Pokemon, we've got a bit of a problem there. It's I see we have a normal speed right here. Yeah. It does, in fact. So, Oko. That right there, I believe it, he also calculated it Oko's walking wake. With the Terra E speed. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, E speed is just faster than Prankster moves. So you're just do- getting around even something like a, uh, a Prankster T wave. 
Um, mm-hmm. but I know he was worried about fake out since fake out is higher priority than e-speed. So it doesn't seem like thing. he's running it there if he, um, well, but what's really nice about Ente is, uh, he can't even fake out because of, uh, inner focus. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we did actually prep about, uh, prep for this last night. Caleb, um, was feeling pretty confident. So this right here There's is perfect it. deck that we came up with in order to kind of get around that, which is really oh, that is not good. Coming in handy, as you can see. Well, so two ghost right. types. I don't know the other moves he has on Entei. Um, I'm assuming it's banded. So like he would probably have something like eruption. And maybe Flare Blitz, possibly, or Stomping Tantrum. But I did, like I said, he was low on time prepping, so I don't know the other ones there specifically. Mm-hmm. That Will O' Wisp miss is huge. Will O' Wisp miss is really big, and we also have a Thunder Wave missing. Um, we're not missing, oh, but. Volt Absorb is big. Oh, there we go. Looks to be a Sash, so that's. Pretty interesting there we've got it yeah that surging strikes is going to take it out 1000 percent of the time for sure ah crit but crit mattered right crit crit mattered of course um and here i believe this e-speed should kill as well the need to be helping handed though um if he has something like aqua jet on urshifu it's probably enough to be close I think he had a roll on the e-speed. I'm not 100% mm-hmm. sure. There was a lot of numbers flying around all in the span of like two minutes right before the match started. Well, he does Probably have helping hand, hand, hand as well. Very nice. We got a protect coming out. Let's see what happens here. Okay, oh. there's both of those are gone. It was really big. Does Enamorous also get helping hand? <laughs> but regardless, Enamorous in front of Walking Wake is a big issue. So the Enamorous, uh, I believe, O-Code with just Dazzling Gleam. Mm. So I don't believe he needs to worry about it, assuming Enamorous kills. Or assuming Enamorous uh, lives any hit. Um, does I don't know have what the special attack use here. Let's have the special attack boost. Um, this is going to come down to a pretty tight couple of turns. It's just going to come down to... Now, if Wake with a special attack boost can kill an Amorous with something, um, I'm pretty sure. Ente, as we know, is locked into extreme speed. So if it goes down to a one versus one and Sableye, Sableye is coming out on top every time. Yeah. It should be interesting. And we, I believe we know that Walking Wake outspeeds. So. Oh, the Hydra Steam with the. And that should be GG for game one, yeah. Does in fact look to be the case. Um, we protect coming out. What do we see here? Presumably a will o' wisp. Yeah. That does in fact look to be GG, I would say. Yeah, it's kind of a here. rough one. But you can probably kill with another extreme speed, I would say. But, um, yeah. There is some interesting stuff that we learned, though. Uh, it looks like Charles had forgotten about a T-Wave earlier in the game. Or forgotten about Volt Absorb. Tried to use T-Wave, so it kind of lost some tempo there. Mm-hmm. Um, and this could have gone very differently had the Urshifu got hit by the Will-O-Wisp on Switch in. Uh, we'll say, now that he's freed from... Um, his Encore and being Choice Locked In... I don't know what he clicks here. Oh, struggle. Yeah. Okay. So that is, in fact, game. All right. Yeah, well, um, that was a close one. That was a close was one. Ve- that was very close, honestly. The um, I-, I think Caleb is probably thinking as lucky stars we prepped last night because <laughs> I ran some extreme speed Terra normal Entei shenanigans on him, and he realized he didn't have a counter for it. So, um, yeah. I'm expecting a, a f- interesting. I'm expecting a. Uh, a sacrifice of some sort to me later on as a deity, Caleb, when you listen back to this. Um, I'm going to need some high praise. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. At least here we get to know that we have a ghost Terra on the Thunderous 
We know there's normal Terra on Entei. I'd imagine we don't see uh, Terra normal Entei this game. That's um, that was kind of my next question for you. Then was um, what's what backup mode does Charles kind of have in the back pocket here? Uh, I believe just Tailwind into Enamorous Sweep is probably going to be his backup plan. I know he built this Enamorous as the sweeper. Um, again, he was low on time, but I believe Dazzling Gleam sweeps almost all Dig Dogger's Pokemon um, hmm. as long as it's neutral. The only issue was being outsped by the Walking Wake. So he was just worried about possibly if he leads with like a Volbeat Enamorous lead, getting hit by Snatch Tailwind probably just loses him the game. Mm -hmm. um, now, or, we, di we, did, we did see all four of Sableye's moves uh, last game and it was not running it was not so um, so this possibly looks like another helping hand lead helping hand e-speed so provides um, some um some options if Urshifu wants to try and uh surging strikes into the, um sable eye which could probably. be really interesting we didn't get to see anything from floats the last game yeah, I'd imagine that it has Aqua Jet and Wave Crash options. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if... I assume Wave Crash in the rain would kill normal Entei. But, okay, right, so, so he just doesn't Terra. Helping Hand's still coming out there, which is nice. And we know that Entei is stuck in it, but now he can't be burned because he didn't um, this is this is pretty interesting here. We know that Entei is locked into extreme speed because of the band. Um, so Andres will likely be clicking his Ghost Terra here, but you have to look out for Urshifu as well. Wild Bolt Storm. Wild Bolt. That you know burn chip. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Ooh, and a lucky para on Lucario as well. This huge para. And so I know this is a special Lucario. Um, not sure how much that matters if you're paired. Definitely going second. So likely had some type of uh, flash cannon or the like, but okay. Ooh, a dark type that was really dark nice type. to avoid the prankster. So this should double kill. Oh, he opts to simply he go went with for the moon blast instead. Okay. Single one. No so, blast was not a chance to kill. Uh, it was a guaranteed to kill the walking wake. So I at best, at best, he probably does not have dazzling gleam on it. To me, this looks to be game for Charles here. And Amorous just well, and Amorous is outsped. So if he Amorous has is something, Ente is also outsped. So it's going to have to click extreme speed if it wants to. Yeah, and so we'd assume there's no helping hand e-speed because we didn't see it game one. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to say it's probably GG for Dig Dogger. Just hit the right move. Um, but I don't know. It'd be coming down to an interesting situation where we're probably in line for Sableye versus Ante again. I could see so what Sableye in this scenario can't do any damage to Entei because um, he stayed fire so there's no burn chip that can happen on him this time so it looks to me as though he's got to go for this enamorous every single second and we do see a protect which is really really interesting oh but that looks that's a roll for sure I would say so he's going to have to either hope for a double protect or to get this roll and he it's misses the a protect. roll this is the roll hydro steam kills right there yeah. yeah that looks to be another Entei struggles himself to death scenario yeah the struggle do more to you than it does to your opponent yeah unfortunately oh he just lets it end right lets here. it happen is fair. I'd say that it's probably 
Yeah. And the honorary, just uh, I'll just do it into the ghost type. Take my L like a man. It was respectable, I have to say. And the rivalry um, continues. <laughs> as it does, this seems to be another uh, point in Dig Dogger's favor here. Um, I know Charles is probably feeling the sting on that one, and Caleb is going gonna, is gonna to come in here, and <laughs> he's, he better say some nice things about me, or I'm going to be a little upset. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah. It's huge. Um, Really well played from both sides, though. I think that um, Charles really went after his win cons very well. Um, holding on to that protect was really solid. Uh, and I really loved the Terra Dark on Enamorous to avoid the um, the prankster moves, which was really wonderful. Um, mm-hmm. It was a special attacking set. I, I, I don't really know if the yeah, avoiding it was a special burn set. helped so much, but just getting to ignore Sableye entirely is really, really good. Yeah, it's just, I think it was also... I believe uh, Skip like gets access to T Wave, right? That was a uh, an idea, but I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Mm-hmm. I would have assumed it could have been Terra Steel or something to maybe resist a Dragon move or Terra Water to resist something from Walking Wake, but it's interesting. Well, Caleb is here, our victor. Um, Caleb, do you have something you want to say to me in particular? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Literally midnight last night uh, was when I put the Terra Ghost on Thunder Ethereum um, because I had not prepped for E Speed Inte until uh, Jack used it against me. Yeah, it's it's a rough one. It's the Entei being able to attack from multiple angles is really strong against lots of you know opponents every week, but against here specifically, the like eruption plan is just kind of off the board having just a Pokemon that four X resists. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, um, huge. Charles, you're, uh, Charles is here as well too. So Charles, I'd love to hear your thought process behind building the Entei the way that you did this week. Well, I, I didn't actually have a ton of time to prepare, but because I've, I've been super busy, so. It was mostly um, it was mostly off the cuff with a little bit I could prepare on the way home. But my thought process with Entei Extreme Speed was that I thought I really needed a one-shot um, walking wake. Or at least like have a quick way to deal with it. Because my, my team doesn't really do super well into it. Quad resisting both fire and water, which are two of the like best attacking types on my team. Really, really sucks for me. Mm-hmm. And then um, also extreme speed, being able to get around um, Sableye was nice too, since it's faster than the prankster moves, and also I can't get faked out or anything. So I was pretty good there. And Helping Hand also out prioritizes all of Sableye's moves. So I'm like, I can just like Helping Hand, Terra Normal Extreme Speed to kill Walking Wake if he leads that. And then after Walking Wake goes, I think Enamorous can like deal with everything else pretty well. <clears throat> um. And I think that's kind of how it went in game one, except I didn't click protect on the last turn like a big stupid idiot. Um, but other than that, I think it went pretty well. And then um, once I saw the uh, Terra Ghost on Thunderous, that was like that was evident of me like not prepping super well because I didn't have an answer to Terra Ghost basically at all. Um, I made my Enamorous um, modest so that it could one shot um, Walking Wake if I needed it to. Um, mm-hmm. but it being modest means that it, um, underspeeds Thunderous, and with that underspeeding Thunderous, I don't have anything that outspeeds Thunderous, um, that can kill it if it Terra Ghost. So, I kind of just have to sack something and, like, let Urshifu get a Surging Strikes on it. Um, mm-hmm. and I think uh, that's sort of what happened game two, and I think it got, it got really close, but I, I unfortunately needed a double, double protect in order to, to get through for that one. Mm-hmm. I was thinking after we after we didn't see the protect game one that you didn't have it. Um, so that was uh, it. Certainly would have won you game one, but in another world too, it could have been really uh, forward thinking, as in you know make him think I don't have it for game two. Protect on um, who again? An amorous. An amorous. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like in, in game one, if I just protect at the end, I, I win. But it was it's like just super obvious for me to do it i just i didn't i don't know why messed up um i think another 
big issue. Weight's just, just tough to deal with. And and the <laughs> the fact that I actually just couldn't kill Sableye with my Entei after killing Walking Wake both games two or one and two. Well, I didn't kill it game two because I wanted the game to end quicker. But like I could have just extreme speeded the uh, Walking Wake and then had had to sit there and burn to death with a Sableye, which is a little rough. Yeah, the um, I I thought the game was over when I missed that Willow Wisp on Urshifu when it switched in. I was like, dang it, that that thing's gonna be sashed, isn't it? And it's certain enough it was sashed because I was super worried about sash Urshifu. Um, and then it came in, and I was like, oh well, okay. Willow Wisp was like a last minute addition to do something about Urshifu. Before yeah. I had dis- disable, and then I I was sitting on it. I was like, I still don't like the disable on Corsair. <laughs> Yeah, I was really I was really disappointed in my Volbeat because I took Tailwind off literally like right before I battled for um Thunder Wave because I was like he's going to have Quash and that's like basically means that I can never click Thunder Wave or not Quash, sorry, a uh, Snatch, which means I can basically never click Thunder Wave or mm-hmm. click Tailwind. So I took it off. Had I had Tailwind, this would have been so much easier because then I would have outsped everything <laughs> with everything. Yeah. It's yeah, that's, that's my. I thought about running game. Snatch. I thought about running Snatch, but in the end, I decided to just go with Quash, uh, since that gets around Tailwind to a certain degree. It's not quite as good as Snatch, but yeah, um, I was that. That was my thought. My original thought with Enamorous was I can tear a Dark, and then if I can get Tailwind set up, I outspeed everything and I one shot everything, and he can't even like Thunder Wave me or Encore me or anything to like fuck me up because I'm Terra Dark. But then like yeah, I was the dark it, and nice. I'm like. I'm like, buddy could just run Snatch, so I can't do that. Like, Sableye is so hard to prep for because it can run, like, any one of, like, ten moves that are really good. And not just good, but they, like, require you to specifically play a different way. So it's hard to play around that many different things when you can only run four moves, you know? Yeah, nobody... I never, uh... That's another thing I have a problem with, with, you know, having Sableye. uh, Every season I have him is like, why can he only have four moves? (laughs) I just want him to be able to do everything. Because he can do everything that I need him to, but then, yeah, there's just a little bit extra. Um, I figured since I revealed all four moves, I figured you were avoiding Tailwind because of the potential snatch, but I didn't know you weren't running it at all. I thought you were... I was avoiding uh, it so hard that I left it home. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So I was kind of expecting it game two, Um, but since you saw all four of my moves in game one... I also thought... Uh, the beginning of game two, I didn't Terra my Entei, because I thought you might have went for Will-O-Wisp on my Entei, given the exact same lead, thinking that, yeah. like, I'm gonna Terra normal and you can Will-O-Wisp that. And I was like, if I just, like, don't Terra and he Will-O-Wisp my Entei, I think I'm so far ahead. But then you, you got it on the Urshifu, which really, uh, brought the way for, um, Thunderous coming, because I'm pretty sure I still one-shot Thunder. Well, no, I for sure still one-shot Thunderous because of, uh, it always critting. So I was like, if that w- will o didn't go through, or if you will o in Tay, I think I'm in a better spot, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was I was considering that you might have switched up your Terra this time to avoid me will o being a in Tay again. Because um, I was really banking on you, <laughs> Terra Normaling, to get that Willow off. It is then, interesting. Like, like, at the end, I thought if, like, I thought maybe, like, there's a world where... I end up killing you with struggle before I kill myself, but I don't. I didn't think it was worth spending the like, you know, twelve turns to find out. But <laughs> I think yeah, I don't actually yeah, know I the exact on struggle, but I think it's. Don't you deal like twenty five percent of your own health every turn, and like yeah, yeah. I think you only get four struggles before you're gone if you're at max HP. Yeah, and I think I only did fifteen percent last game. Oh, okay. Yeah. And say yeah, like 15%. Caleb, tell us a little I was, bit. I was burned when I did 15%, so maybe I did more. I don't know. Mm, I think I was running max defense on Sableye, so who knows? Yeah. That's what I was going to ask. The, the Sableye set, um, kind of talk us how you got to those four moves. Because I think you're right that it does definitely have four move slot syndrome. You know, it just wants to run so many great options. Like, how did you settle on the four that you did? Uh, I kept switching them up before I had. Before our practice last night at midnight, I had Sucker Punch as my fourth move. I had Rain Dance, Quash, and Encore. Those four were too useful to not have for this matchup. Uh, But the last move, I kept debating between Snatch, between Sucker Punch, between Disable, and finally I landed on Will-O-Wisp. Because 
without it, I didn't have much of a way to cap Nershifu. Uh, cap, uh, yeah, neuter Nershifu at all. Um, but yeah. I think that wound up being the right move. I would have, I would have like felt horrible if <laughs> I realized disable would have been more useful in this match because I just changed it five minutes before the match. I'm wondering if anyone that? can see how in game one, on turn six, Entei did sixty nine percent with no crit on an extreme speed, but then both of uh, the rolls in game two did forty two and forty four percent. It looks like we I was, were. I was terrible in game one. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. I was like, Man, that's a huge swing. <laughs> yeah. It was it was banded, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 did, I, did, I just put uh, extreme speed on my guy. <laughs> he head. only had extreme speed? No, no. It, oh. <laughs> if it wasn't banded, I would have switched moves at the end with Sable Eye. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was that's why I mean I I was encoring it just in case it wasn't banded, but <laughs> That that damage was too high to be otherwise. Man, I was really hoping Floatzel would get to pop off here, but like Terra Normal E Speed helping it just obliterates any any remnant. I was surprised of, you, you still brought it game two. Um I, yeah, because that game I was expecting you to go with Tailwind. Um mm -hmm. to try and uh outdo it a little bit. I thought maybe you'd change up the strat a little bit, so I just wanted to bring it again just in case. Uh, and then he just died immediately again. That's what felt so bad about like walking with. I felt like I was playing a four v three both games because like just floats will die turn one both times, and it still was like really really hard because walking like stuff to deal with. Well, I yeah, yeah, I think the ghost Terra definitely came in super handy because um, I mean I think you're right that Caleb's team is a lot of very he can make a lot of really quick uh, members to his team, and all of them are. A lot of them are really squishy, right? Uh, mm -hmm. The way he can help counteract that is with some uh, Taurus Intimidate, potentially, or some other things, but Entei just ignores that entirely with um, Inner Focus, which is really interesting. So I think that you did a good job of identifying kind of a weak link in it. Um, you know, even with how little prep time you got. Funny, funny, Calcut just posted in the chat. Actually, it looks like I could have killed uh, Max Defense Sableye with struggle at the end I guess oh no just threw that one away huh damn uh i didn't need yeah, i didn't even consider that <laughs> suppose we will never know i should have um just did it you know well any any final comments from our competitors or from you zach how you feeling i think it's real surprising i thought that uh we might actually see mammoth wine come in Instead of that float soul, so I was kind of with Charles expecting that to just something else to be in there. But well, my main my main fear I had a I had a big fear of Among Us, and float soul was my answer to Among Us because uh, I um, I figured like t float soul float soul does a lot if it doesn't get redirected by Among Us. So I was running Terra Grass uh, Choice Band. Um, so I could ignore Rage Powder, ignore Spore, um, and then hit everything really hard in the rain. <laughs> to just one-shot anything except for Urshifu, who, if he was out in front, I could just hit with the Terra, Grass, Terra Blast, um, which was a potential strat I was thinking of dealing with. So I was thinking maybe you would switch up strats to use Among Us if you did that. I didn't have any answer for it other than Floatzel, so I had to bring it again. Yeah, I think someone had said in the Discord either this week or last week. It might have been in our team chat, but it's sometimes it's just a big strat of if you win game one, sometimes it's forcing your opponent to just beat you game two, and you can just run out what worked already, right? You get a lot more information even if you lose game two. Mm -hmm. But in game ones, if you had that same strat, you're like, okay, I kind of know how this plays out, but it worked better for me than it did for him. Like, mm. if you do the exact same situation in game one, if you just hit the Will-O-Wisp, yeah, you that's win game of, one a lot easier. Like, well, I was I was thinking something similar. I think like I think game one went really well for me. I just messed up on the last turn, so I was like, I think I could just bring the same Pokemon. Pretty much, I just swapped out like, you know, I swapped out Bulby because I got helping hand on a couple different guys, so it didn't really matter. Um, 
And I was like, I think I'll just like figure it out. And like, I think it, it still is really close. Turns out I might have actually been able to win had I just like played to win instead of just playing to end the game. But I can't, I can't mock you for the uh, for the uh, thunder wave because I also forgot. I was like, oh no, I'm thunder wave. There's nothing I can. Oh wait. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was really was, upset uh, for a second. Not a commonly had ability, so I, oh, yeah, I had forgotten absolutely. about it too. I was like, I didn't know that worked through ability. Through see, it's not an electric. Board. You see, it's not an electric type, and you instantly want to click it. I totally. I think both yeah. of us in the game were surprised when it <laughs> proc the volt absorb too. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it just goes to show, even if you've played a long time, there's lots of different situations that people just forget about. Scenarios, have, especially uh, in this league with the draft and everything, you just, no one considers the Volbeat uh, Terra Ghost Thunderous T matchup unless you have to. Yeah, there's so many interactions. Luckily, we didn't have someone that had, like, he's trying to use priority moves on psychic terrain or something like that, but you, you still find stuff most weeks where you go, I'll try to keep that in mind eight weeks down the road when I have this same interaction in the playoffs. There's too yeah. many things to try to keep track of. It always gets me when uh, there's like psychic terrain and trick room up because then you can't see the psychic terrain. All you see is trick room. Uh, yeah. So you just completely forget about it every right, time. Well, I got to bounce, so. Awesome. See you guys. Good games. Great game. Cool. Probably call it there, Ben. Mm -hmm.